Hi, everyone, and welcome to, I think this is part three. Is that right? Or four? Back by popular demand, whatever it is. Um, we are here for Secrets of CRM Success with Chris Fritch and Whit McIsaac. And today we're talking about redefining and enhancing adoption. So, hi, Chris. Hi, Whit. Welcome. Hey, Stephanie. You guys doing? It's a little rainy and cloudy in New York. I hope it's better where you guys are. No, nope, it's pretty gross in Atlanta where we are. All right, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> guys, I'm gonna put some links in the chat for all of our attendees. We have uh, another segment of this. We'll get into that. We have some links to connect with all of us. And I wanna thank Amelia who's behind the scenes doing all of the production. So let's get started. We've got a lot to get into today. Okay, so this is this was a four-part educational series, but we have so many great things and we've had such a great response to this series that we've actually made it into a five-part. So the first part was about law firm CRM success. The second part was about data and data quality strategies. The third was about CRM adoption, and all of these are available upon request. Just message us, let us know, and we will send you the recording. And actually, and then we're going to be talking about business and practice intelligence as well. Yeah, Stephanie, we had like 60 responses after the last session to, to add something on uh, business intelligence or practice intelligence or something along those lines. It's an extension of the business development uh, components of CRM. So, so we're gonna add that in and we'll be announcing the date pretty quickly. Yeah, I think we actually have a date. So I will put it, I will put all of that information in the chat, which um, will be easily accessible for you guys to register. So we're excited for the next program. Okay, so this is, um, these are our LinkedIn QR codes. For those of you who don't know, this is a tip I always give people. It's right on your LinkedIn app. It's um, accessible to Android or iPhone users. You can find it at the top search bar. You just put your cursor there, well, your finger there, and then it'll change into, like you'll see a little QR code on the right. And you can either get yours or scan ours. And so all you do is hold up your, your mobile and you can go to that main search bar, if you guys see. And click on that right up top, you see LinkedIn QR code. If you go to scan, you can scan any of our codes and link in with us, please, because we all post some really great things. And actually, Stephanie, now if you just hit it with the camera, I think it opens LinkedIn automatically. It's a new feature. Well, thank you. Don't have to get a link. There you go. Right. I feel like awesome. such a dinosaur. All right. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus so, wit. Right? I know. So today we're going to be talking about so many things about defining CRM success. And I'm excited about this. We've got strategies to enhance buy-in, rollout planning, how to target key groups, how to deliver impactful messaging and communications, which is so important as so many of us know, having implemented new CRM systems and having to uh, inherit old CRM systems and kind of turn them into, weave them into gold, so to speak. And then training. Training is so important because we know that it's not enough to just train the secretaries or train the lawyers. Most of the lawyers, you know, don't know how to use it. So we've got to train everybody and we have to make it easy and we have to show them why they should be using CRM. And that, to that point, dedicating staff and support resources, how you can do that, especially when you are at maybe a mid-sized firm or a small firm versus a large firm where you have a dedicated data steward or a CRM team. And then creating reports and dashboards are so important to be able to actually track how your CRM system is doing in terms of its success. And, you know, I feel like as an in-house marketing professional for 20 years, and still today I'm a consultant to law firms and to legal service providers, one of my jobs is CMO to a mid-sized law firm. And right now, what I'm trying to do is like make sense of all the data we have. And it's like analysis paralysis and data. Like, I feel like I've got way too much info. And I don't know what to do with it. And I got to call Chris because she's got to help me implement this system 
platform wide to make it actually work. So, you know, I always say it's great if you are creating amazing client alerts, amazing newsletters, amazing webinars, amazing invitations. But guess what? If these communications aren't actually reaching people, you're not doing them for any strategic reason. And if you're not segmenting your list, if you're not actually using CRM in a way that's strategic and meaningful with the lawyers, with other professionals at your firm, at your professional service firm or a law firm, you're not utilizing this in a way that will actually help your brand and help bring in new leads and retain your clients. So CRM to me is one of the foundational aspects of marketing and business development, irrespective of the size of your firm. So um, that pretty holiday card that you may have started to work on already. I'm actually working on one guys. Can you believe that for, um, for this year, <laughs> which I'm like, yeah, I can't believe it, but it doesn't matter if no one's actually getting it right. And all these alerts. So CRM needs to be a core fundamental aspect of your marketing and business development strategy. So with that, guys, let's delve into this very meaty topic. Couldn't have said that any better, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Thanks. You know, having lived through it with um, in my 87 years of working in the legal industry, I think I know a few things about this. So now I want to learn from you guys. So I'm going to put some links in the chat and go on mute and you guys take it away. Hi, everybody. I am Chris Fritch, uh, the uh, founder and a CRM success consultant at Clients First Consulting. Um, what we do is work with firms all over the world to help them successfully select and implement CRM and uh, related and integrated technology and implement it in such a way that they actually get value. Uh, and that is going to be the core concept you hear today is value, value, value. You will hear it over and over. It's the most important thing, especially when it comes to adoption. Uh, having done this for, I don't know, almost 15 years, I rarely found a firm that didn't say one of our key problems besides data quality was adoption. How do we get people to use the system? Um, and we're going to talk about ways to do that. And then at the end, we're actually going to talk a little bit about maybe how we should redefine the concept of adoption uh, to sort of uh, uh, reflect the interesting world of law firms and, and other professional services firms that we live in. Um, so, you know, here are some of the reasons and no reason to uh, read the slides to you because we're going to provide them to you at the end if you would like them. Um, but a lot of this um, the problems with adoption is we're trying to get attorneys to go in and use the system and you know we're, we're more focused on implementing the system and less on the people and process and change management that's involved so you know people think that you're going to turn on the crm plug it in and clients are going to line up at the conference room door with bags of money right that's not how this works um, there's a lot involved in people process and change management and you know kind of dealing with the firm environment that we're in what do you think Whit? yeah i think that the bullet that you have up there on the first line is probably the one that creates most of the angst uh, associated with with these challenges which is the perceptions. So, you know, too many of the lawyers, too many of the fear earners, their perception is that this is a system that's designed to support the marketing department um, and to help with the marketing communications. What they don't understand, and we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that today, is they don't understand that the value of this system is to support their efforts, to support the growth of of their business, their practices, relationships with the clients, and um, and securing your existing clients from from the bad guys, the competitors. So, so changing the perception is one of the key things. Again, we'll be talking about that in messaging, but this is it. Kind of creates the foundation for the obstacle that that we have to overcome, which is this isn't about creating work for the lawyers, for creating busy work for for the staff. It's about gathering very, very valuable information, organizing it and putting it into um, uh, a spot where everybody can gain access to it the way they want to gain access to it. So um, so from that standpoint, we've got to 
we've got a big challenge associated with changing the way people view what these systems are intended to do. Well, and speaking of obstacles, Wit, I think that takes us very well to our next slide. Yeah. Our users. Okay, so uh, actually it's really interesting. Um, I started uh, working on a, uh, a presentation like this a while back, you know, and I had someone who said, you know, in, being in a law firm, it's like squirrel, squirrel, you know, everybody's easily distracted, everybody's so busy and overworked, you know, and, and that's true in the real world, but even more so in law firms, I think. And of course, you know, we're all just a little nuts sometimes. Um, it's interesting, though, you know, you think of squirrels and you, you don't think of, you know, some of the things that we might not know about squirrels. And it's a lot like our users, right? Um, when they get scared, the first thing they do is freeze and they do nothing. And it's just like our users. If they go in and the interface is, is complicated and the data is bad, they freeze and then they never come back. They're done. But come to find out if you woo them the right way, squirrels can actually be very trusting. And so our goal with our users is going to be to try to gain their trust. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, the next slide, Chris. Yep. This is no, go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I had a uh, managing partner of a large firm say to me, you know, Chris, <laughs> you know, running a law firm is a little like herding cats. And I said, no, actually, it's more like herding cats with a really smart cats with opposable thumbs because they can open a door and walk out. They can pick up their iPhone and start looking at something else. So we have to really think about, you know, these are the folks that we're trying to get to adopt, that we're trying to get to use the system. And they are busy in a law firm. Time is money, literally, right? So we have to start thinking about ways to make life and things easier for them. Um, and not all attorneys are tech savvy. We've got to keep that in mind. So for some of them, we may have to adjust how they use the system. Um, and we work in, a, in an environment where mandating is a four letter word. There is no mandating uh, in a law firm, you know, and often we don't even have leadership support. And don't forget that <laughs> these folks are skeptical beyond belief and they argue for sport. So, you know, we have to really be on our toes if we're going to win them over. And that's what we're going to show you more of today. Yeah. Ways to win them over. But Chris, the, the bad data piece is something that I just want to make sure that we emphasize. You know, if, if we do succeed in getting the lawyers to, to click through on their mobile or via their Outlook or into the CRM system by itself, and as soon as they go over there, if they find data that's not accurate or an empty database or records that haven't been uh, filled in, it turns them off. And like you said, they won't come back. So, so now, with the technologies that are out there and available in the marketplace, you know, from, from LinkedIn, and Dun and Bradstreet, and all these third-party content providers, there's ways of enhancing the basic data and providing a lot of value to the lawyers as they go to consume this information. Yeah, I mean, that's the reason we have a data team of 70 outsourced data stewards, because we found out the most important thing to all of our clients, they all had problems with data and nobody wants to handle it internally. Um, it's a it's a lot of work and you have to keep you have to keep up with it. Something so. in that data is huge, Chris. I mean, like you're, the way that your team can actually take a core record and, and gather the extensions to that information, be it industry data or type of organization or type of contact, that information delivers so much value to these users that it's really, really important. Well, not only that, think about, you know, you have an assistant who you're training to use the system and you tell her, you know, when you put a company, a person record in, make sure you pick the right company to attach it to. And you go in and in one form, there were 101 entries of their top client. Well, which one does she pick? She has no idea. As she, how would she? So you know what she does? She goes in and creates the 102nd entry. And that's how it happens. So you really do have to stay on top of that. What, what do you think about adoption? What are some other things that are uh, that you can do to get adoption with? You know, the, the, the communications piece, and I know you're going to spend some more time on that as we get further into this, but having everybody understand, like I mentioned earlier, that this this platform, this solution is not designed to create busy work. 
that it's really designed to provide business intelligence, information relating to the client, like a single view of the client, practice group intelligence, white space. I mean, people need to understand that, um, that the platform here is designed to aggregate information and provide a centralized location for them to consume that data. Again, it's not designed just to type data into the system. And um, we hear more and more firms now where, where they're talking to us about a different methodology for identifying what adoption is. And I'm glad you put that slide in here in just a few minutes. It talks about the changes associated with the way um, adoption is organized. So from our standpoint, it's shifted completely away from the old days where it was all based on how many contacts I contributed and who I connected those contacts to. That created a lot of extra work. And uh, because of that extra work, people stopped using it. So. Yeah, and in this environment where everything changes so fast, the old days are like last year. <laughs> exactly. So. All right, well, a big piece of this is change management you know and when you work in a big firm or even a medium or even a small firm you know it can seem daunting so we like to think in broad generalities we're going to get a hundred percent adoption no you're not <laughs> we're going to get a hundred percent data quality no you're not um, so we have to stop thinking about uh, you know sort of these broad categories and start getting really micro um, you know pilot groups and sometimes even individual attorneys can make a difference. Um, you know, I've said you start with a pilot group. The beauty of CRM is it can do a thousand things. The problem is it can do a thousand things. It should do three. And those are different for every firm and often for groups and sometimes even individuals in the firm. So when you start with a pilot group, you're not going to have a training program or a communication program for the entire firm because everyone is unique. So when you put together a pilot group, start by finding the right pilot. Like we recommend a group that's interested uh, and has some time to do CRM, especially if they have a strong persuasive leader that could be a champion. Find that group and wrap CRM around a problem to solve, a process to automate, something that's gonna help them, that you can motivate them. So for one firm, big firm, um, it was the mergers and acquisitions group at the firm actually cared about activity tracking. It's impossible, no one ever does it, but this is a really prominent top, I don't know, one or two firm. Um, and they realized that one group did care about it. So what did they put together for the training? It, was all, it wasn't about list management or how to add people or whatever, it was about how to tr regularly track and interactivities because they were doing it anyway and get reports out so that once a week when they had their meetings, they could look at those reports. When they trained the next group, it had nothing to do with that. It was list management and contact entry. So pick the right group, find a problem or a process, fix all that, train, get a success, communicate the success throughout the entire firm and repeat, start with another pilot group and build from there. You've got to remember CRM is not a pilot or an initiative or a project. It is a fundamental change and improvement in how the firm manages its most important asset, its relationships. So it never ends. So it means you've got forever to get better at it. So you've got to just keep this process going. Train, communicate, champion successes, do it all over again. Yeah, Chris, the way I like to describe it is that the, the CRM train, it doesn't stop anymore. You don't you don't bake a system and then feast off of it for the next year. You know, it continually evolves and it evolves by identifying these, the next pilot group or the next practice group or the next geographic location or, or industry team that needs to be able to have this type of functionality to su support their initiatives. And, and if, you, if you aren't on the lookout for those new opportunities and for the new uh, areas to expand the momentum and, and grow the success of the project, it, it makes it really difficult. So don't try to boil the ocean up front. Take small pieces, be successful with them, and then grow on that momentum. Um, it's very easy, especially for technologists, to identify all the wonderful things 
that can be done, like you mentioned before. And but that's it's the kiss of death trying to boil the ocean. So here's the selected very strategic. Yeah, and here's another thing to think about on the next slide. I had a really smart managing partner say to me, whatever you do, I don't care if the system provides value, just please don't piss off my assistants. They are often the key to success uh, and we need to make sure that we focus on them. And that We get them what they need. We make their lives easier, not more difficult. And that's how we engage them. And you need to have the attorney's help. Yeah. So, those are some keys to adoption and we're going to talk about you know some additional ways to get adoption but i wanted to, to sort of pause it right here maybe it's time to rethink adoption so you know i've been doing this 15 years some of these crm companies have been around over 20 25 years um, and we have been talking about adoption for as long as there has been a crm system um, and maybe it's time that we started rethinking adoption, especially in a law firm, <clears throat> because, you know, in a law firm, like we said, time is money. There's no mandating and people are incredibly busy. Now everybody's remote. Maybe instead of measuring success by are the attorneys entering their contacts and adding people to lists, maybe we should start to think about it in new ways. Consumption as a proxy for adoption. Are, are they getting the information they need when and where and in the format that they need it in order to develop business, make smart decisions, you know, reach out to, on a regular basis to prospects? Another thing to think about is, you know, if you've got people who are billing, I don't know, $1,000 an hour like some attorneys do, is the highest and best use of their time updating lists and entering contacts? maybe we can use technology like ERM or enterprise relationship management systems that capture the contacts from the signature blocks of the emails. Um, some of the competitive intelligence and data sources that Witt was talking about earlier to bring in business and industry. So finally, we can pull an industry list, an energy list, so we can do an energy seminar for our energy clients. And then some really smart firms who are doing things like tracking activities, business development opportunities. They're like, how can we leverage the support staff? You know, how can we have data stewards focused on data, assistance, you know, entering any data that's needed or maybe updating things, and then using the BD and marketing team to enter the activities that are needed and to, uh, you know, really support the attorneys with what they need. It's a, it's, it's a better model, I think. Um, and you know they can create the activities, they can create the opportunities, and just generate the reports that the attorneys need and get them sort of on-time information. So let's start defining success by the value the system provides, not by data entry. And I think Chris, right on the, the head of the nail. I mean, we're we're involved in projects now where right out of the block, the message to us is the lawyers are not going to type data into the system. Okay. So it's up to, to us to define the integrations and the data harvesting and the accumulation tools that can actually leverage the information that's already going into the time and billing system, the conflict, conflict of interest system, the case management system, the expense management systems, right? So that data is already going into the system, right? Then we got data from LinkedIn, we got data from the, these other third-party um, content suppliers. So if we if we gather that information and then provide a really easy interface for somebody to use their mobile phone on the way to a meeting to identify who's the last person that met with this client, what was the discussion about, who's got the strongest relationship with this client from an activity standpoint, then it becomes a really valuable um, consumption piece. So adoption yep. is different these days. So, yep. Yeah. So the other thing, you know, if we're going to talk about adoption, it's hard to talk about that without talking about accountability. Um, that I hear that everywhere at every firm that we work with, nobody's accountable. You know, the assistants are not accountable. The attorneys, you know, we can't mandate. You know, nobody's got any any uh, responsibility. 
you know, nobody's going to share their contacts because they, they don't want other people to see them. You know, people are, are not going to just not going to do things. And so, you know, one of the things is that's why I put the smiley face next to this one. Make participation mandatory. OK, I'm sorry. It just makes me laugh. It's not going to happen, but it may not happen for the attorneys, but it can happen for the assistants and sometimes even for the associates. I had another smart managing partner say to me, you know, Bob and Betty Rainmaker, I get it. They don't want to do this. We're going to use ERM to capture their contacts and we're not going to waste a lot of equity on them, a lot of time on them. But I can tell you what we are going to do. These associates are going to do this uh, because in seven or eight years, we're not going to have a problem with adoption anymore because it's just going to be part of our DNA. It's a system that everybody uses. Um, for the assistants, I've had firms that say, look, you know, we're, we're tired of being sort of hamstrung with technology because the assistants don't want to do it. We're going to create certifications, make it part of their job description and tie it to their compensation. And if they're, you know, if they if they're going to continue to be here, then they need to pass these certifications and be experts on this technology. It's part of of the new job of an assistant. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's the paralegals. I have some firms that's really that are really smart where they're tracking um, experts and they put paralegals in different offices in charge of making it an expertise database for the um, for the expert witnesses and others. Uh, and they're responsible for it. So. You know, and sometimes what can really hold them accountable is to foster some competition. Um, I've got some great ideas for branding campaigns, for competitions and incentives, and I'm happy to share that if you, you know, drop me an email or a LinkedIn message. Um, but competition can actually be a lot of fun. One of the best tips I got from a, a, one of my clients was we did a competition around, you know, cleaning up data, and it was great, you know, enhancing things. It was great, but we had some holdouts. So we changed the incentive that not only did your office or your practice have to win the competition, you had to have 100% attorney participation. So you watch the other attorneys in the group go after that one or two that have not entered their data or have not participated because they want to get the trip or the, you know, the goodies. Um, that's a, a good way to really make sure that everybody gets on board. You know, Chris, people watch that, right? So if, whether it's how many contacts get contrib contributed on a monthly basis to how many relationships are spawned based on those contacts or or the zippering effect associated who with who we're connected to at one of our key clients. You know, so people understand the value of needing that information as it relates to those clients. And, uh, and they'll watch and they'll look at dashboards and they'll see where they stand on those. And you know, you you taught me last year when when I wanted to use the stick, you taught me how to use the carrot and actually uh, have the law firms understand the value of this relationship-based um, method system that allows us to keep track of of who's really growing the contacts and the relationships in the firm. And it's a it's a positive thing, right? So emphasize the positives and the the ones that are the laggards the ones that don't understand the value or need to be educated better on the value they'll come around because they don't want to sit at the bottom of those lists exactly and by the way we do want this to be valuable for everybody so if um, you know what we're talking about stimulates some questions please do drop them into the the chat and question area because we will be taking some q a at the end now, here are a few ideas for incentives and rewards. Um, you know, bonuses, rec recognition is a huge one. Saying good job, uh, you know, and, and really kind of promoting people who are doing a good job in, you know, if you have a marketing newsletter, you know, you have an intranet, um, not just not just giving gifts, but also giving praise. It's a it's a big deal and awards and, you know, things for, like that for the contest can be really a good thing to do. Now, you might not always want to do carrots. And again, if you want ideas for carrots, I've got, uh, I've got quite a lot of them. But sometimes in a law firm, we're going to have to use maybe a stick. What do you think? <laughs> no doubt about it, right? So yeah. after our next slide. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about 
the importance of communication um, and and using communication and training uh, as a as a real part of getting adoption. Whit, you want to talk to this? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, you know, almost all of the firms that we're working with these days, their their marketing departments are experts at communicating with clients and with potential clients in the industry. What it, what everybody doesn't really comprehend is how valuable those approaches can be towards building up uh, the success of the CRM implementation. So what we like to encourage our firms to do is to treat the upcoming um, solution and implementation as a marketing event and a series of campaigns surrounding um, the benefits of what this solution brings to the firm. And uh, with, with marketing lists by user, or you'll hear us by, by persona, so senior partners, partners, junior partners, paralegal staff, um, secretaries, legal assistants, marketing, business development. Let's create those marketing lists and let's internally launch messaging efforts that are designed to clearly emphasize what the system is designed to do to support their efforts. And, um, and trying to do it in one big grand, hey, let's get all the messaging together for everybody. It's just not as effective. So just like we do with our clients in the industry, let's be very specific and on point with the messaging that we're communicating internally about the systems. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's not one time, it's a continual trickle of information to support this messaging, um, putting together events. So be it online webinars or lunch and learns or things along those lines, this is what we're looking to accomplish through the implementation of the system. We'd like your feedback. We'd like your suggestions. We'd like to understand how you think we should not only leverage it better, but how do we message it better? And um, you know, the survey piece, everybody likes now to talk about surveys, but let's get people involved. Let's get, again, their direct feedback and then use that feedback to drive more and more momentum and more and more success. Now, if we ask for the feedback and we don't do anything, then that creates issues all by itself. So if you're gonna do this stuff, act on it and make sure that you're successful in getting the message um, pushed out. And then we talked a few minutes ago about not trying to boil the ocean, trying to take small success and grow on that success. When we have success, it's gotta be communicated and it's gotta be messaged. And people, they embrace that and they understand it and they start to think about hey, how could this system potentially help me with my practice or with my key clients, things along those lines. So um, take all the momentum you can get, communicate it, gather and build on it. And um, communications and messaging is a really critical part of the success of these implementations. And I think we've got a unique opportunity here around communication, around documentation, uh, because now that we're working from home and remote and hybrid, digital marketing has never been so important. You know, finally, some of our events are coming back, really exciting. Um, but a lot of people still are not are not getting out, are not attending, and are not doing in-person business development. So if there are people that you can reach uh, and talk about how this new technology can help them, develop business and market their, uh, you know, their, their knowledge and expertise in a more digital world, you know, I think it's going to resonate. So I think there is an opportunity now to really sort of get that, get that messaging going. Um, in terms of documentation, you know, I always tell firms, you want leaders and champions to be on board. So start with a message from firm leadership, but then, you know, you also, everything you do, should communicate the benefits. When we help firms select systems, we start with a needs assessment and we document all the groups of stakeholders and what their needs are um, and what, what value means to them, what are benefits to them. And so you communicate the value and benefits for them, for the firm, for the clients, things that will resonate with individual groups. You need to make sure that you've got documentation in multiple formats, FAQ documents, you know, videos for the folks that are visual. Um, you know, if you do videos, one thing to keep in mind, interfaces change. So you might record a video, you've got to remember, you're going to have to go in and regularly re-record those videos as the technology changes and, and you know, updates happen. Um, 
you know, training materials in multiple formats. We'll talk more about that. And Wits already mentioned the importance of surveys. These are the types of documentation. One of the things that we help firms with is we do, we have an entire communication plan start to finish with all the documents. And we start with like 30 documents that you need to do a communication campaign. Um, people don't think about it. There's a lot. And we try to tailor the documentation to each user group. So there's, you know, uh, a letter from or a message from firm leadership. But there's also, you know, the, the why CRM and why should you care? There's one for the attorneys. There's one for the assistants. There's one maybe for the associates or different groups. You know, training material is going to be different depending on the different groups and what their roles are going to be. So we do a lot of FAQ documentation um, because that's really easy and quick and targeted and they can keep it desk side. So just some tips to think about there. You know, Chris, this um, rage surrounding social media has shown us how effective the videos are, right? And it's and it's not a 20 minute, you know, tutorial on something. It's a one minute, two minute, hey, this is a challenge that I was having. This is what I did to address it. This is how you can do it. Let me know if you've got any questions. And just those those quick little videos, you know, supported by the tutorial PowerPoints or things along those lines go a long way. Yeah, one of the firms I worked with a few weeks back, they were gonna have me do trainings for all the groups of key stakeholders. Um, it was it was a few months back actually, because it was still in the middle of, you know, nobody was really working back in the office yet. And instead, we came up with a strategy to do one video of me doing the overview. And it was more of a, rather than a point and click how to use the system, it was why to use the system. Why is the firm doing this? What does it mean for the firm? And what does it mean to you individually? But the great thing was they also had the managing partner involved and she introduced me. And so she talked about why the firm was doing CRM and why it was so important to them. And then, you know, I talked more about value as well. And now it's on the firm intranet. Whenever anybody new joins the firm, they can that they watch that as part of their CRM, you know, their first bite of CRM training. Yeah, Chris, I dropped this slide in at the last minute because I really thought it was something that we needed to to, to make sure that we emphasized um, this whole messaging piece, starting back with one of our first slides, the perception that we're dealing with is people don't understand why this solution is being implemented. And um, you know, firms spend hundreds and hundreds of hours developing their business plan and their growth strategy and their industry strategies and client team strategies. And I mean, those things are really well thought through. These systems, these solutions are designed to support those initiatives. So if that messaging is separate, if it's not integrated, it creates a challenge. So our suggestion and, uh, is to, to take this platform or these platforms and, and have them tied directly to what the firm is trying to accomplish from a, from a growth standpoint, from an industry standpoint, from a client support and satisfaction standpoint. Those are critically, critically important. Um, you mentioned this earlier. Right, so the greatest asset that these firms have is the relationships that their employees, their fee earners, uh, partners have with contacts and companies. And unless we can get the platform in place to help understand where those relationships exist and allow us to leverage those relationships, then we don't get the value out of that. And as we'll talk about in our next session, um, a law firm's business intelligence in a large part surrounds this relationship intelligence. So again, we're going to spend quite a bit more time on that. Um, protecting client from competition, I've got in here, is the third bullet. Right? There's some very smart firms out there that are making uh, really creative use of this type of technology. And what they've got the ability to do is to map their clients to their practice groups and their clients to their geo locations to understand where they've got white space. Where is their, where are their clients, um, industry-wise, location-wise, practice area-wise, where they're potentially susceptible to being uh, penetrated by competition. And these systems now give us the ability to aggregate that information and identify how we can 
grow the business and protect from competitors coming into this to to take our clients or a percentage of the wallet share surrounding our clients. The next piece that I wanted to make sure that I covered was we've mentioned uh, the types of users and personas on a number of uh, occasions during the session today. The messaging that goes to these personas, these users, has to specifically address what's in it for them, how does the firm benefit, their practice area benefit, how do their clients benefit. If they don't understand it from their perspective, they're not going to get it because they can't think out of the box. So we've got to be really clear, really on point, and really prescriptive with how we message to these users and get them to understand that it's here to support what they're trying to do. And you probably can't over communicate. I had somebody the other day at a very large firm that said, it doesn't matter how many times we communicate or how many times we train, there'll still be people that say, I don't know where the CRM system is. How do I get into it? <laughs> it's just happened. It's been happening for years. So. Yeah, the next slide is going to talk just to that point. And, and you cover this better than anybody, Chris. So, so train. how do we go about getting this um, message ingrained so people can really use this stuff? Yeah, I mean, we're back to value, just like you said. Um, it's got to be quick. I love quick reference guides. You know, I, I like to do desk side training for individuals. And if I'm training an assistant, I'll usually start, you know, when they were in the office, you start with, hey, have you got any business cards that your attorney wanted you to enter? Why don't you grab that? <laughs> we show them how to enter a business card. Now it's real. Now they care. You know, oh, you've got that list you've got to update. Try training at holiday card time because it's a big pain point and they're you know they all are like oh i haven't used this thing in a year i might want to figure out how to use that crm system again but you've got their attention you've got a group that's doing a big event you've got the attorney attention you've got a problem to solve um you know focus at that particular time uh, like you said the training for an assistant is going to be different than the training you know for a partner or uh you know an associate so think about that um, train attorneys ideally in their own offices or obviously now via video if they're not in the office but use their practice information their list their contacts show them enhanced data and information that Whit was talking about from external sources about their business and industry um, we're doing an assessment for a large client in texas and their comment was we want to be able to use this system as a point of intelligence so that we're going to a meeting we're not pitching we're talking intelligently. We want business and news and industry and financial information about the clients and prospects we care about. So when we go in to pitch, we have we can have an intelligent conversation and know, oh, maybe I need to bring someone else to the meeting because the client has these two or three issues that you know are a little outside the scope of my knowledge. That's what impresses clients. You know, if they if they're in Outlook and living in Outlook, maybe you want to train them in Outlook. If they're on the go, maybe you want to train them mobile. You know, and I, again, don't want to be at that 100%. You're not going to get 100% participation. You're not going to get 100% of people that want to do mobile, but the ones that do care about it. And I, you, you train them individually. I had a, a really great um, a CRM manager at a firm in Philadelphia, and she goes in and, you know, trains individually. And they do some smart things. Whenever anybody requests a competitive intelligence report on any company, she makes sure the data gets entered in CRM. Well, one report is one report, but it usually goes to one attorney or group and then it's done. Well, if they're in the system, when you do one report, it's now there forever. If anybody opens the company, they can see that business report, that news, that information. And over a period of time, there are hundreds and then there are thousands of reports and cumulatively, everybody can see that information. Uh, she also had an attorney who called her up and said, hey, um, you folks in marketing, you've got a business card scanner, right? And so, you know, my 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 uh, Sierra manager at this firm said, we do, yeah, and and happy to help. Um, but you know, you do too. And the woman said, what do you mean? He says, well, you know that thing I showed you last week, that CRM. There's a mobile app you can scan the business card while you're out at the event. Did you know that? And she's like. I had no idea. Come down to my office right now and show me that. And so she just one-on-one, -on -one, she goes down and shows that one attorney how to use the scanner. But she didn't stop. A couple days later, or the day later, she called to follow up and said, you know, hey, I just wanted to follow up with you. Did you still need me to scan those business cards or were you able to do it yourself? 
And the woman's like, oh, it was great. And um, by the way, I now want you to train my entire group on how to use this at next week's practice meeting. So be prepared to come in and show everybody how to use the business card scanner. But, you know, there's some firms where people don't really, they don't, you know, they're like, I don't really want to use CRM on my, uh, on my phone. And that's okay. Yeah. And I, you know, this last bullet that you have right, right above the lady doing the plank um, is um, the mobility piece, right? Too many times the training, all the education is on the full screen in a conference room where people are sitting around looking at what the functionality of the system is. However, when you transition that functionality to either Outlook or to mobile, it looks completely different. You know, and, and what we hear too many times is, oh, this functionality is available on your mobile, but they can't visualize it. And then when they see it on the mobile, it looks different. And so our thoughts, uh, our best practice, train people on the mobiles, right? Yeah. and show them exactly how it works. The other thing that it does is it forces simplicity. You, there's not enough real estate on the screens, so it's gotta be simple. And above all things, which we covered in our very first session, if these systems, if they're not easy, you're not gonna get people to, to use it, either in the form of putting data in or consuming it. So if you're gonna do mobile, yeah. focus on it. Go get a champion who's a big business developer and show them an, a business report on a key client, a taxi cab type report. So if you know they're going out to people's to offices all the time, say, look at the information we're going to make readily available to you on your phone. So when you're in the car, the cab, the train, whatever, go into the client, you can look at it. Good stuff. Yeah, so this the next slide, Chris, it looks like there's a, quite a bit of overlap from the, the information we just covered, but I want to... I want to approach it from a little bit of a different perspective, and, and I know we're running low on time, but for the, for the tr attorney training, um, again, too many people try to focus on technical training. These are the icons and the buttons, and this is the functionality that you push. They need to understand how they can use it in a real life scenario. Just like you said, if I'm in the car, if I'm on the train, if I'm in the airplane, and I want to identify what information we have on this key client that I'm going to see. If somebody gets trained on that, they'll use it, right? And then they'll communicate the value of what they've learned to other people. So from a training standpoint, don't fun function or focus on buttons and functionality and stuff like that. Focus on the real world scenario. Um, the assistance, you mentioned this a couple of times already. Um, this team, becomes our support ecosystem. So the more they invest and the more they learn, the more they can help others, uh, specifically the lawyers, understand how to, how to use the system. And it becomes distributed at that point. You know, it doesn't all go to a help desk or a training center, um, things along those lines. And then again, just to make sure, different people learn differently. So some people can deal with, with text, and with tutorials and you know FAQs and quick uh, tip lists and but others they learn from video or they learn from somebody personally walking through it so it's an, not a one size fits all um, leverage be creative and um, use these different methodologies to to get the messaging communicated out there the other thing that's the bottom uh, train doesn't stop. We're adding new features, new functionality, we're adding lateral hires, we're adding new practice groups, we're expanding geographically. We've gotta have the mechanisms, the methodology, the best practices in place to support the growth of the system. So as you're going through this process, productize it and put us in a position to be able to expand and grow based on the momentum of the system. And I think on this slide, you know, we do want to make sure we get to questions. We've really talked through most of these things. Um, but again, we're going to give you a copy of the slides as well. But, you know, there was some really good content early on. And I think we've touched on most of these. So let's jump to the next slide. Yeah. So let's talk about how to roll out. Um, let's talk about whether to roll out. 
So when we're talking about adoption, you know, we typically perceive it as, okay, we're going to get, you know, we have 500 attorneys, we're going to do 20, and then we're going to do another 20, and this 20, and that 20, and this office, and that practice. Um, so let's think about, you know, are we going to redefine adoption? Maybe it's not, by the way, please don't try to roll it out firm wide all at once. I think we now understand that that has been a recipe for disaster and almost no firm that's ever done it has succeeded with it. So you've got to think about it in groups, logical groups, practices, offices, individuals, um, assistants, attorneys, think about it like that. Um, I all, often think about in rolling out groups of attorneys, I start with the assistants. How many assistants serve those attorneys and how many contacts to each of those attorneys have? We've got a whole spreadsheet when we plan rollouts. And my first thought is the assistants because you don't want you know, the assistant who supports the two top rainmakers who have 10,000 contacts each to be in group one with both attorneys, because she's it's gonna take her a month to go through their contacts. Um, so they have to kind of think about strategies, but, and always do pilots. We talked earlier about that, you know, but one other thing to think about is, are you gonna roll everyone out? Maybe you're just gonna use ERM to capture contacts from everybody. That doesn't require a lot of training, if any. Um, but you're going to give licenses to some key business developers and you're going to figure out who those are and do groups of them throughout the firm. You need to think about how you're going to communicate after your groups what the successes were to drive more adoption. You know, you're going to have to think about when you sit down with a group, what kind of training does that group need? It won't be the same as the, the last group. What types of reports do they need? You've got to take some time to configure the system to support what they need and to create the reports and the dashboards that they need, you know, and to follow up and survey them to make, uh, to get suggestions to make the uh, rollout better for the rest of the firm. So don't think about it as, you know, if I start in January 1, when will I be done? You know, I had a client that said, hey, if we buy this new product on January 1, when are we going to be done? And I said, you're not going to like my answer. Never. You're never done. You're never done. You're so. never done. Good. But the good news is you've got forever to get better at this. So if you just do some of the things, you know, the, the whole idea behind this is you're drinking from the fire hose with all this information, get a few good nuggets, train and communicate and focus on change management. Don't overlook the people and process and change management aspects if you want to succeed. Focus on value, best practices. Um, instead of, you know, adoption being defined as people entering things into, you know, typing things into a system. Um, and a couple other things, don't do it alone. Reach out to help. WIT will get on a call with anybody. I'll get on a call with anybody anytime. We're always happy to help. We've also got um, crmsuccess.net is our uh, sort of resource where we've got a blog and tips on adoption, tips on training and got lots of white papers and other things, you know, feel free to subscribe there on our website at clientsfirstconsulting.com or crmsuccess.net is our e-tips newsletter that goes out with lots of fun tips every, uh, every week or two. And I think, you know, this might be a good time to really talk a little bit about, let's, let's go more to our audience and see if anybody has any questions. Everybody, please feel free to, to cue some questions in. And again, Connect with us on LinkedIn because again we'll take questions anytime um, after the uh, after we're done here today as well. Do we have any questions? So one of the questions that we got was, are we going to be providing this PowerPoint deck to the attendees? And um, we are going to be doing that. We're also going to take the recording of this session and post it online so you have access to it afterwards. Yeah, we'll definitely be following up with that. Amelia. Oh, we had a question about what, what does ERM mean? Uh, as mentioned, it's Enterprise Relationship Management. And I don't recommend Googling it because it seems like we're the only ones that call it that. If you look up ERM on Google outside of law firms and legal, you'll get a lot of different um, like ERP related resources and things. But for us, it's a system that captures contacts from the signature blocks of emails, creates a who knows who relationship, and based on traffic patterns of those emails, it will also create a relationship strength 
So not just who knows who, like the old CRM, you know, you would sync your contacts from Outlook and that created a who knows who. But what you would find is you'd go to that attorney and say, well, I see you know this person. And they'd say, who? What? Um, you know, they might have known them, I don't know, five years ago. Nobody ever takes contacts out of Outlook. They just don't. And so, you know, they might not even, they might have just met the person in passing and put them in their Outlook address book. Um, and they just don't really have a good relationship. But ERM, based on the recency and frequency of traffic on the email exchange server, will tell you, you know, who's having the most communication, who knows who and how well. Uh, and so it's also a really good tool for data quality because when it creates those, um, so this uses the signature blocks of emails to create those contacts, they're right. An Outlook contact, 30% of your data degrades every year. How often do you think all your attorneys are updating their contacts? Like I've got 5,000 Outlook contacts and I have no idea. I bet at least half of them are, are in some way dated or outdated or incomplete. When you have a signature block, it's there. It's good data. You know, Chris, one of the things that we're using this technology for these days is, um, you know, identifying obviously who knows who. But now what you've got the ability to do is to aggregate that information. So from, from employees to um, practice groups, again, to geographic locations, to client teams, to industry teams. So you can, you can aggregate the communications and the scoring mechanisms. So you can see what the relationship with a client is doing from an activity standpoint. So is, is, the, is our activity with this client trending up? Is it flat? Was it trending down? Um, same with prospective clients, the same with industry leaders, things along those lines. So this data becomes really, really valuable business intelligence for, for understanding the way things are trending. And you know what, Whit? I think that's a nice segue to our next session that's gonna be on practice and business intelligence. So at that point, we're almost at time. We'll stay here and answer a couple more questions, but we're going to get probably cut off right at the hour. So hit our QR codes below and reach out to us on LinkedIn or our email addresses and phone numbers are there. We will always take a call. Um, if, but if we don't have any more questions right now, I think maybe uh, we say thank you and give you one minute of your lives back. I love it. Hopefully everybody thought this was valuable. Please let us know uh, your thoughts and perspective. Thanks again. Hey, Chris, thank you. Thank you, Whit. Absolutely. Have a good afternoon, everybody.